In this video, we're going to look at the head to head at McLaren and compare the strengths and weaknesses of both Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri. It's currently 15 3, the head to head in qualifying, and there's only one worse head to head on the grid. That's Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez 17 1. However, in the last eight races, Oscar's outscored Lando 150 points to 129. So it's been a story of two halves and a story of two totally different skill sets between the drivers, which we're going to touch on in this video. We're going to take a look at where exactly Oscar's been losing the lap time in qualifying and where exactly Lando's gone wrong in a few races and how he needs to collect a few more points in order to put this championship to bed. If you're interested in what my thoughts are, definitely keep watching. For those of you guys new to the channel, my name is Martin and I'm a specialist technical coach and mentor for open formula drivers. You might be wondering what that means and we're going to dive into exactly both of those topics with regards to Lando and with regards to Oscar. The coach really is about finding lap time. So that's the technical component. That's when your driver inputs need to be right, taking the right lines, getting the right tire temperatures, analyzing your data, driving in the wet and so on. And the mentor is really bringing those points home. Are you good in starts, changeable conditions, attack, defense, strategy, fuel saving, tire management, mental mindset, capacity, limitations, and more. Now I'm going to start this video by saying I'm not taking sides or supporting either driver or any team here. If you're a fan, I'm simply here to give you information and context for when you watch the upcoming races. And if you're a driver, I'm here to give you a mindset and a framework that's going to help you and shine a light on some of the areas where these two drivers can improve. Let's start by taking an overview of the two drivers' skill sets, strengths, and weaknesses. So Lando's the one with the one-lap pace. As we mentioned before, he's got the 15-3 qualifying head-to-head -head lead. He's the one putting himself in more championship and race-winning positions as compared to Oscar, who's generally fallen back in qualifying. He's the one with the lower lap time. He's the one that can analyze his data and telemetry well. He's the one with the feel for the car. And like I said before, he's the one getting into those positions where he can start to bring home some trophies. Now, as we also mentioned previously, in the last eight races... Oscar has outscored Lando 150 to 129. That's because Oscar's qualifying pace has been slowly getting better. So if Lando takes pole and is at the front of the grid, it's quite often to see Oscar getting in there as well and also having a look at the race wins. But the difference being between Oscar and Lando is that Oscar has that race's ability to convert, to bring home those points, to deal with changing situations, to think on his feet, think critically, problem solve and find solutions on the fly. So let's start with Oscar and how he can improve. Well, like we said, he needs to get himself into more race winning positions more frequently. That's going to give him the opportunity to fight for those wins and show off his skill set, which is ability to be able to deal and manage race situations. He needs to take a step back and try to understand where that lap time is being lost and why. And what does he need to change in order to do that? Is it the line? Is it the braking? Is it the throttle? Is it the speed into the corner? Is it the speed on the exit of the corner? Is it in a particular particular corner like long corners of constant radius or chicanes for example Oscar needs to spend more time deep diving into the data and work on his driving style to try to extract that lap time out of the car like I said before we are going to look at the telemetry together now and we're going to have a look at some examples where Oscar has been losing this lap time and he's bleeding lap time to Lando Norris in qualifying after we do Oscar's telemetry analysis we're also going to touch on some of the examples where Lando could have done a better job and brought some more points home okay to give a quick summary of the telemetry overview that we're going to start to have a look at together now We've got Singapore qualifying, the most recent race actually where Oscar got absolutely smacked by Lando and he was giving away that time on the corner exits. So we're going to have a look at that and see what went wrong there. We're going to have a look at Netherlands turn one. It's a place where Oscar has been losing a lot of lap time in long corners of constant radius. See Lando just roll into this corner a little more gently, braking earlier. And this is a common theme that we've seen across the grid with drivers. Those who can roll into the corner and keep the car's platform a little more stable and the aerodynamics a little more more stable they're having a more predictable car on the corner entry netherlands also has another long corner of constant radius in the middle of that track we're going to have a look at that corner as well because there's a point at which oscar's not braking or accelerating which means he's just waiting for the car to turn that's not a great place to be in when you're waiting for something to happen you are losing lap time so with that said let's jump into the telemetry now and see exactly how and where oscar is losing that lap time in qualifying 
Alrighty, so our telemetry analysis begins this year in Singapore. Singapore was a telling race because not only did Oscar get out qualified by Lando significantly, but then we had Lando making a few mistakes as well in that race, which we're going to touch on as well. So it was a classic highlight and a classic example of where these drivers' strengths and weaknesses are. So let's take a look at qualifying. You can see Lando got in front of Verstappen, Hamilton and Russell before Piastri. So let's take a look at the, both their drivers' laps in qualifying. And you can see here's the difference. It's a 29.5 versus a 29.9. That's four tenths. So we're going to click on both their laps. And you can see the track map pops up. And in, in orange, sorry, that's going to highlight to you the track dominance. And you can see there's a lot of orange there in favor of Lando Norris's 29.5. One thing to note is you see all these corners here, corner, corner, where it's white, and then on the straights, that's in Lando's favor, corner where it's white, straight in Lando's favor, corner, straight in Lando's favor, corner that's white, straight in Lando's favor, and you get this theme around the track, which is really, really, really interesting. Without even looking at the data, I can tell you Lando's getting better exits, he's getting more straight line traction, he's getting his foot down harder and earlier potentially a bit of short shifting in the throttle mapping, the gear he's in, all got to do with traction and getting nice releases off these corners. It's really interesting because you wouldn't particularly think of Singapore as being a track that you need super duper good exits, like it hasn't got long straights, like for example in Baku, but yes, you can see that's where Lando's finding the time, it's on the corner exits. So as we have a look at the data, the first thing you're going to be presented with is the speed trace, and just below that you've got the delta. And this is what I'm really interested in and what I'm really going to highlight to you guys. You see these like drops and then increases, drops and then increases, and then drops and then increases. Well, anytime the delta goes down, that's in Oscar's favor, for example, here. But anytime the delta goes up, that's going to be in Lando's favor. You can see that the lap ends in Lando's favor, four tenths. But what this down and up represents is that Oscar's faster on the way in. He's finding time before the apex of the corner. And Lando on throttle earlier with beautiful exits is finding more time back on the exits of the corner. So the deficit that he's losing on the entry is being repaid plus some more on the exit. So these three corners here are where the damage is being done. If you just take out these little dips here, you can just draw a straight line. And that's the delta going in Lando Norris's favor and never being repaid back. So let's take a look at the first example. And we need to see what corner that is. And it's actually the hairpin. So you come over the bridge and then get into this hairpin and then you send it down one of the short straights. So it's this corner, this corner and the final chicane where Lando's got significant track dominance. So you can't have a look at the dip here and say that Oscar's finding time. You've got to have a look before the corner, they were equal. And before the next braking zone, it's nearly a tenth of, this, of a second. So down this straight here where this full throttle is, that's where the damage is being done. So he's lost a tenth in this section of racetrack. So let's have a look at what's happened here. We're going to zoom in a little bit more so we can highlight the difference in this particular corner. Keep in mind, this is the hairpin in Singapore. Okay, so we've got braking. So Lando Norris in orange, he's the one braking earlier. Again, we can't see to what magnitude he's braking, but generally speaking, when you brake earlier, you brake softer, and when you brake later, you need to brake harder. So Lando's the one braking earlier, and I suspect softer into this corner as well. So they lift off the throttle at the same point. So what that means is Lando's got a little bit of overlap just here as well, where he's still getting off the throttle and he's starting to apply the brakes as well. So there's a bit of massaging happening there. I wouldn't read too much into that. I don't think that's got too much to do with their technique. I really think it's about the braking point that is Lando braking earlier. And you see the advantage of braking earlier, of course, is that you can get on throttle earlier. So what you're losing in the exits, Lando is certainly making up for in exit speed. You can see the speed trace here where Lando starts to break earlier. He's the orange. His speed dips down earlier and then Oscar carries on a little bit longer. It's just the problem with that is it just takes you a little bit longer to rotate the car. So Lando's getting the speed done earlier and the rotation done earlier and the throttle is coming on earlier. This speed advantage that Oscar gets on the way in, Lando gets that plus more all the way out. So it's if you can get more speed on the way out, then you're going to carry that down the subsequent straight as well. So that's where Lando is finding time in this section of racetrack. And like I said before, it's a similar theme across all of the uh, last sector of the track here. We see exactly the same thing. We see Lando breaking earlier here and breaking earlier here as well. And here into the last corner. So the final chicane and the last corner. 
but crucially, he's getting on throttle earlier. Now check this out in the chicane. This is really interesting. See this big orange spike? That's the short squirt between the corners in the chicane. So Lando's obviously got more confidence and the car is straighter in the middle of that chicane. That means he can give it a bigger squirt between the corners in the chicane and then he can give it a more harder throttle on the way out because he's carrying more speed and downforce as a result of that squirt. Have a look at when this throttle starts to get introduced from, it's here. So I'm at the bottom of the orange throttle when Lando drives out of the, ch the chicane. But what I want you to focus on is what speed are they doing at that time? Lando 142 and Oscar 133. What does that mean? Well, more speed is worth more downforce. It's worth more grip. So by Lando giving it that squirt, keeping the car a little bit straighter on the exit, he's the one able to put his foot down and drive towards the last corner. So I thought I'd highlight that to you guys as an advantage that Lando's finding in Singapore. And pretty much where all of the lap time was being lost, keep in mind they were pretty equal up to that point, And it was those last three corners. Now, given that it was the last three corners and they were equal to that point, we need to start talking about rear tire temperatures as well. And did Oscar lose this by losing rear grip and therefore being handcuffed in his ability to put his right foot down? Unfortunately, we don't have that data here, but that's something that the teams would definitely be looking into. Alrighty, let's bring up Netherlands here, which is just the other track that I wanted to show you guys, just to give you an understanding of where exactly Oscar's losing lap time. Now, Netherlands, it's not a long lap. And to see Oscar out qualified by Lando by this sort of margin, uh, as you can see, it's half a second here, or more actually, nearly half a second or more for a track that's only uh, 70 seconds, or in Lando's case, 69 seconds long. Uh, it's quite a damaging uh, concerning stat for Oscar. Now, why is that even though it's a short track? Well, Netherlands is stacked full of long corners of constant radius. What do those corners look like? Well, you can see them just here. They look like just a rainbow. They're not quite a hairpin, but they're a drawn out hairpin. They're like a long version of a hairpin. Whereas a hairpin typically has a very short apex, like think about say the Chinese hairpin, for example, down that long straight, it's a very, very short apex. Whereas a long corner of constant radius, it's blown up. And it's a long corner. You spend a lot of time turning. So some of the things that you can try here are tight lines and short corners. So we're going to have a look and see if, if Lando has done any of that. Um, but again, Norris is the one in orange. And you can see that on the entry towards the mid and exit, that's where Lando is finding the time. You see here as well, after this long corner of constant radius, that's where Lando is finding the time on the exits. So it's something similar to what we saw in Singapore as well. So if we had to attribute it uh, to where Oscar's losing that lap time, it certainly would be on the corner exits. Let's scroll down and take a look at the delta and see where the damage is being done. And yes, you can see turn one here, there's a bit of damage being done. And then from this point onwards, you see this delta just cruise up from 286. So that's nearly three tenths, cruising up into the three tenths and then just cruising up into the four tenths as well. That's also another good exit. And you see this just continue to cruise up as well. So there's a good exit here as well. So when that happens, even here down the pit straight, it's just cruising up. He's just losing some lap time. When that happens, like I say, it is on the corner exit. So let's take a look at that. Uh, the first one being where they cross the line fairly equal. Obviously, they're starting the laps and bang, one and a half tenths is gone uh, before the lap is even underway. So let's take a look at that. And you can see here that during the braking, that's where Lando's also finding more time as well because of the speed on the entry. So actually, when you look at your track map here, he's got speed on entry and exit as well for good measure. So what's happening here? Well, it's similar to Singapore. If we look at the throttle, Lando's the one that lifts off first. So he's in orange, remember? And he's getting out of the throttle first. And then he's putting the brakes on first as well. So what does that actually mean in terms of driving and what's Lando trying to do? Well, because this is a long corner of constant radius, Lando just wants to feel the grip out here. He just wants to see how much grip there is and he wants to roll into this corner and use the front tires to help slow the car down. He just wants to leave all of his options open in this corner and pick a rotation point that makes sense for the grip that he has. Think about it this way. If you brake late and hard and deep and you pick it, you pre-pick and pre-conceive an apex in your mind and you brake towards that apex, well, things can go wrong. You haven't left yourself any options. And as this corner goes on longer and longer, you run out of choices and options and you can't really change what you're doing mid-corner. Whereas what Lando is doing is he's just rolling into this corner gently and then that's giving him options because when he wants to rotate the car, he can quickly brake a little bit harder 
come to a stop, do his rotation, and then get on throttle harder. What does harder mean? Well, Oscar's the one getting on throttle first, but he's getting on in kind of a lazy, gentle way because he's still probably turning at this point. Whereas when Lando gets on throttle, bang, he can go straight to 100% because he's picked his rotation point a lot quicker. So he's spending less time in the corner. He's rolling in and then bang, he picks his spot, rotates on throttle, everything happens all at once. And then he soaks up the delta again on the exit as well. So this is a really technical corner. It's one of the seven technical corners. You've got long corners of constant radius, as you see here, but then you've got decreasing radius, which is this one down here. And then you've got increasing radius, which is the last one as well. And then you've got, in addition to other four technical corners, which are chicanes, hairpins, S's, and double apex as well. So this is a technical corner, and this track is stacked with those corners as well. There's four of them in this track. And it's just really interesting to see how Lando is taking this corner. He's not committing in the initial phase, but when he's committing, he's committing and really hard as well. So beautiful driving there by Lando in the first corner, and he's rewarded with one and a half tenths of delta. Let's take a look at the second long corner of constant radius on the track. Oh, so third, sorry, because this is another long corner of constant radius. That's so the third one. And that's where, uh, if you just follow this delta, that's where the delta is creeping up in Lando's favor and he has Oscar that is has lost from 2.9 down to 4.3 he's lost nearly one and a half tenths in this zone here so let's take a look at that and you can see the braking and Lando's the one in orange remember the similar sort of thing is happening he's coming off throttle first he's getting on the brakes first and he's starting to turn in this corner but what Lando's doing is getting on the brakes quite gently I believe because like I said before when you're braking earlier you're generally braking softer and when you're braking later, unfortunately, you need to brake harder and you're more committed into the corner. So that's what I see here. Lando getting off throttle first and braking softer. So he's braking into this corner. He's using the turning and the front tires to help slow the car down. And that's just keeping the aerodynamics nice and stable, as opposed to Oscar, who you can see has got much shorter braking distance here. He's braking later, but he's braking hard and off. So he's using it as more of an on-off button. And I'm exaggerating here just based on the data and the width of that braking. You can see here, Oscar's like on and then off. Whereas what Lando's doing, he's coming on earlier, but softer and then coming off more gradual. So the car's balance and platform can remain a lot more stable as well. Now check this out. There's a point where Oscar in white, he's off the brakes and look how much time he has to wait here before he gets on throttle. So nothing is happening for Oscar here, 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 here. He's just waiting for the car to turn. And that's not a good place to be in because when you're waiting for, for the car to turn, you are waiting, you are losing lap time. Whereas Lando, by braking gentler and earlier initially, he's got that weight across the front. He's got the back unloaded. He's pivoting the car beautifully. And then he can get on throttle harder and earlier as you see here, and that's where the damage is being done on the exit. That's where all this speed and all this delta is creeping in Lando's favor. So it's a combination, just to recap, of braking softer, braking earlier, maintaining the brakes on for longer, and braking deeper into the corner, and get, therefore getting on throttle earlier and taking advantage of the exits. That is what Lando Norris is doing to Oscar in long corners of constant radius. Okay, so there's some of the areas where Oscar can get himself some more lap time, get himself higher up the grid and allow those race craft and racing abilities to shine so he can bring home some more points. So let's talk about Lando and where he can improve. Well, I've had a quick look and I've got some notes and we all know the season that Lando's had, but there's a plethora of issues that Lando needs to manage. There's starts, there's race craft, there's just management and changeable conditions, ability to adapt, ability to problem solve. So let's take a look at some of those together. So on my notes here, we've got the start in Spain and Hungary where he lost the lead into turn one. In Spain, he actually got not a bad launch, but he was just very passive and he was under attack by Max and another car down the pitch straight. He was very passive into the braking zone. And then he just got squeezed out there into turn one. So he lost the lead there. I don't think it was due to a bad start. I think that was racecraft. In this case, defense. Defense was not present. Uh, the starts, of course, in Hungary, he lost the lead into turn one, but that was due to a bad start. So we've got defense and racecraft, starts. And if we have a look at Netherlands as well, he's lost the lead due to a combination of both. He's got a bad start, but he also hasn't cut across to the inside and defended his place and defended the corner and taken control of the corner in Netherlands. So he lost the lead to Max in Netherlands as well. So a combination, like I say, of starts and racecraft for Lando there. 
Now we've got Austria, which I've covered in my socials on Instagram very extensively. I believe he completed a successful move up the inside of Max Verstappen. He got up the inside, Max was forced off the track, and Max kept the position. I think in those circumstances, Max owes Lando that position back. So what did Lando do? Well, he continued to attack, and then he changed what worked. Instead of attacking up the inside, he started to attack around the outside. So this could be out of frustration or otherwise. I think what Lando needed to do there was just chill out because he'd completed a successful move. Max went off the track. Max owes him that place back according to the rules and Lando should have just saved some tires, saved some batteries, saved some fuel and then maybe tried an attack a little bit later down or we'll see if the stewards hand out a penalty. Just allow time because when you allow for time, you allow for things to come into your world. You allow for the stewards to make a decision. You allow for Max to potentially give you that place back. You can think a little bit more. He did have time at that point in the race. I don't think he needed to attack. And like I say, when he did attack, he started to attack around the outside and that's not what worked previously. What worked previously was up the inside. So it's these small differences and where you need, we need to be really, really sharp and a good problem solver. So what happened? Lando attacked around the outside. Max breaks it diagonally across. He squeezes him out. Lando doesn't budge a single point. They both come together and Lando loses some points. Oscar actually outscores him in the Austrian Grand Prix. Okay, we've got Baku qualifying where Lando was saying he had yellow flags. Well, it was actually a white flag that he saw out of turn 15, but it's a white that was flashing that then went out. So after that, you're pretty much free to go. So he, before he got to that point, that white was out and not active and not relevant. Then Lando's made a mistake into turn 16. He's come around the corner, seen the Alpine. Then he's seen a flashing yellow down the, down the road, but that flashing yellow has then turned and become flashing green before he gets there. So in that situation, I think there was enough insecurity and enough uncertainty in those flags. They were not double yellow flags that came on and stayed on. This was a flashing white that went out and then a flashing yellow that he was not at that then went green. So like I say, there was enough instability and uncertainty that Lando could have at least argued the point or contested it later or maybe done a lift and still got through. He should have definitely made it into Q2. Now, I'm not saying that safety doesn't absolutely come first. I've covered this in my socials and in previous videos before. Absolutely safety comes first, but that's a double yellow, guys. And that's a double yellow that comes on and stays on. And you need to read those situations as a driver. You need to be able to think quick, adapt, problem solve. Like I say, these are all the skills that you're going to need to become a world champion. So that's certainly an area where Lando lost a lot of points. Baku qualifying where he was tested not on his speed. He was tested on his ability to read the flags. It was a tricky situation under pressure in qualifying. But hey, that's the difference. Now, the last one we need to talk about is the Singapore race. Obviously, Lando did a fantastic job in Singapore. He outqualified everyone massively. He just walked off into the distance. But there was a few points in Singapore where Lando had a few brushes in the wall. These are concerning as well because Lando, you need to be bringing those points home. So what can we say about that? Well, is it a lack of attention? Is it a lack of concentration? Was he distracted? Was the physical fatigue kind of sapping his... Uh, his ability to drive? Was he simply bored? Uh, was it cold brakes or cold tires? Actually, we should bring up the telemetry and have a look at that lap. So why don't we do that now together and see exactly what, what went wrong and what happened to previous laps as well. So let's have a look and see actually what went wrong there in the telemetry. So he's actually made two mistakes. So lap 29 is this one here. He actually pits on this lap as well. So we need to be asking ourselves, were the tires like you know, was he out of front tires or did he lose some temperature in the tires or what happened there? He's also made another mistake here into the final chicane. So we're going to have a look at that as well. So let's do the first one. Let's just compare the lap before, which is the 37, to the one where he then made the mistake and pitted and then he comes out on the hard as well. So let's take a look at that. And if we look at the delta, you can even see it in the speed trace here as well. This delta was actually on a fairly like good and normal lap, everything was going pretty well, but then bang, this is the issue. So I'm be curious to see what has happened here. Like I say, this is lap 29 uh, down the bottom here on this corner where this white line pops up. This is where he nearly crashed and ended his race and the front wing went into the wall here on the exit. So absolutely crazy. So let's take a look. So uh, the 41 is the mistake, obviously. That's where the low minimum speed is. So we're going to have a look and yes, he did break significantly later than he normally breaks. So you can see straight away that it was a breaking 
breaking point issue. He's missed his breaking point here. And that's why you can see this speed on the top. Sorry, go back. Uh, this speed trace here from the top starts coming in with more speed. And then it's, whoop, hang on a minute. I'm going too quick here. Delta goes up. He lost 3.3 seconds on that lap. Takes him a while to rotate the car, all the usual stuff. But this is a genuine mistake. Lando has come in. He's broken later than he normally breaks with old mediums. So that's the mistake. Now, the question is, why did he break later? Did he miss his braking point? Was he looking at something on the steering wheel? Uh, you know, did he miss his breaker boards? There must have been something there that meant that he lost some concentration and missed his braking point. Potentially just a lazy reaction to the breaker boards as well. Who knows? But very, very, very interesting. Uh, another one I want to show you guys. Another mistake here. I'm not actually sure what happened or if the TV caught this one. But again, have a look at the Delta. He's lost 1.2 seconds into the final chicane. We're not sure if that's traffic or otherwise. Um, but yes, it has taken him a while to rotate this car and he's got on throttle later. The braking looks like no issue. I just see a normal, like he's actually broken slightly earlier on the slow lap. Um, but for some reason in the middle of this corner, potentially he's got a little bit of a swap or something has happened in the middle of this corner a mistake into the final chicane. That's where we are here on the track just before the last corner. So these, normally this spike is for when you pit. But actually, in this case, there's, there's a mistake on this in lap here, and there's a mistake here as well. So we've got two mistakes, not to mention the brushing of the wall on the entry. Uh, where's that corner? Uh, that's here. The brushing of the wall on the entry just before the bridge and the chicane and the hairpin all down here. So he's brushed the front right against the wall as well. So there's been two or three mistakes that Lando's made here, which definitely he'll want to reflect on. And it certainly wasn't a clean race for Lando Norris by any stretch of the imagination. So there you go, guys. I wanted to use that telemetry to highlight to you the Singapore example, but I also wanted to just summarize and recap all of the different areas that you're going to be tested in as a racing driver at the professional level. So you've got the starts, obviously, which you messed up in Spain and Hungary and Netherlands, and we can go on. You've got the attack and defense. Obviously, that was an issue in Austria and the lack of defense in Spain turn one the lack of defense off the line in Netherlands as well. He lost the lead to Max. Then you've got Singapore, where potentially it's a mental issue. It's either, either in the areas of concentration, attention span, capacity, or boredom, or lack of just focus uh, drops in attention span. Like I say, it's just something in that area has meant that he's come undone there. And then of course we've got Baku, ability to just read those lights in such a changing, difficult situation in qualifying. Now I'm not saying that any of these situations are easy. That's exactly why we tune in, exactly why you watch, but that's also exactly why you should have coaches and mentors with you, just to remind you of some of the things that you need to be doing sometimes as well. So there you go, guys. I hope that video helps you. I hope it highlights the strengths and weaknesses of both driver. Ideally, you'd have a driver that's just the mesh of both, right? Someone that's got the lap time taking all of the poles and then someone that can just convert and bring home those points and deal with changeable situations and problem solve on the fly. Like we saw Oscar's drive in Baku that was such a well-managed, well-maintained, emotionally stable drive. And then in Singapore, obviously, we saw his really, really, really poor qualifying pace and Lando with the upper hand in the qualifying pace. But then we saw Lando again in the race just making some clumsy mistakes. It's so interesting to see the dynamic and the mindset of these two racing professionals. And that's why driver coaches and mentors exist. That's exactly what we're here for. So if you're interested in working with me, definitely get in touch. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it insightful and found it interesting. If you can definitely subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment as well. If you have any thoughts or questions or wanted to say something, definitely drop it in the comments below. I do my best to attend to all of the comments. So I look forward to interacting with you there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.